Welcome to Diabetes Eye Health. Today is the first in a two-part educational series titled Diabetic Retinopathy. What is it and are you at risk? My name is Casey Kaufman and I'm pleased to serve as moderator for the session. First, I'd like to introduce our presenters. Dr. Deborah Schlossman is Assistant Professor of Ophthalmology and also treats patients at Joslin Diabetes Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Dr. Timothy Murtha is a clinical instructor in ophthalmology at Harvard Medical School and also treats patients at Joslin. In addition, we will be hearing from our patient presenter, Evelyn Smith-DeMille. Evelyn has diabetes and she'll be discussing her personal experiences with having her eyes examined. And we will now take a few more questions from our audience. Um, we do have a number of them that have come in. Uh, this is a question that I'll, I'll ask you, Dr. Schlossman. Do I need to have a PCP order an eye test, or can I make the appointment with an eye doctor without a PCP's order? I guess that probably depends on your insurance, your insurance coverage, right? Right, right. I mean, generally, you should, um, you can make an appointment on your own, but it's good to check with your insurance and check with your primary care physician to make sure um, that it's in the network. Um, but again, as Dr. Murtha said, I would make sure you see a retinal specialist or somebody who really is experienced in diagnosing and treating diabetic retinopathy. Uh, um, may I interject you here? You certainly may. Uh, so in terms of uh, insurance coverage, uh, the vast majority of insurers across the country will be rejoicing if you have an eye exam. <laughs> it is part of their program. They would absolutely want you to have an eye exam and they will cover it. This is not considered routine eye care. This is considered treatment of a medical condition. So, so yes, if you are covered by the large insurers, this is part of their package and you should be covered for this. Because to ignore it is much more costly, Absolutely. right? I mean, there right. isn't just an altruistic point here. Right, what I was saying really is who you see. They, right. There may be some restrictions, but absolutely, I completely agree with Dr. Murtha. We don't, we don't consider these to be routine exams or frivolous so, or right. extras. Um, and the other thing that I would like to interject is that if you, talking with your PCP is again part of that communication and getting all of the team members on board and having them communicate with each other. And that it is, makes sense. It makes such a difference. We, we have a number of questions that came in and, and I'm gonna just throw them out to you and um, please feel free to interject, to answer and, and um, in, in no, specific order. Uh, first question, I have macular degeneration. Am I more likely to get retinopathy? Macular degeneration is a separate process from diabetic retinopathy. Um, again, we talked about the macula being the part of the retina responsible for detailed vision. Um, so if there's macular edema or swelling in the macula from diabetes or macular degeneration, which is a separate process but also involves the macula. So I would say it's probably not related but again, it's involving the same part of the eye, the part responsible for detailed vision. Another question that came in is, um, does diabetic neuropathy predispose to di diabetic retinopathy? Uh, yes, if you, if you have diabetic neuropathy or kidney involvement with protein in your urine, you are more likely to develop diabetic retinopathy. This question has to do with a genetic component, and I think that that's probably one of the triggers for a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety for folks. So this question came in, my mother lost most of her eyesight due to her diabetes. Does that put me at greater risk? I don't know if we know the answer to that, but I can tell you that the treatments we have available now are vastly different from uh, even five or 10 years ago. So I would say that you're at much lower risk now if you're on top of things because we have so many more treatments available. And just the way so I think I Dr. Murtha was describing the, the way a patient's waiting room, doctor's waiting room looked right. during the scientific study um, and, and just getting on top of controlling your sugar is so different from somebody's mother's, you know, this isn't your mother's diabetes, no, right? The, the world has changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And Evelyn, do you feel that, that things, you, you've seen the arc, you've, you've, you probably recall the times when they suggested that you keep your sugar level at a certain point and now it's, it's far different than that. Absolutely. I was part of, um, in my, actually in my first pregnancy, I was part of a research study, I'm very big on research studies, um, that was looking at the level of a woman's 
A1C at her first pregnancy program visit and the outcome of the, the pregnancy in terms of the health of the baby. And it is just so clear that it's all connected. Uh, you know, it, it, it absolutely is something that works for the better of everything and everybody. Question um, for both of you. I've had to get stronger prescription glasses twice over the last three years. Does that mean that I'm getting diabetic retinopathy? No, no I would say it's not at all related. However, um, blood sugar, again, as blood sugars fluctuate, your prescription can really change from day to day because as blood sugars are high, sugar will diffuse into the lens, which will draw water in, so the lens will swell, and it may make your glasses seem like they're not working. So sugars really should be stable for at least four to six weeks before getting an eyeglass prescription. Otherwise, the prescription may be wrong, and it's just going to continue to fluctuate. So it won't hurt your eyes to wear the glasses, but you, you, know, you can just waste a lot of money doing that. But um, prescription changes do not mean retinopathy is worse, worsening. Um, you mentioned briefly, Dr. Murtha, about injections, but what are the, the other treatment options for retinopathy? Um, and regarding injections, who is eligible? Who's a good candidate for that? So we'll be covering this topic in a later program, but just for tonight's sake, we can talk about it briefly. A teaser. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Thank, yes. Uh, so. The evolution of treating diabetic eye disease uh, in the ophthalmic realm uh, has uh, really changed. The first, the first change was the advent of laser treatment many years ago, and that really has been a, a vision saver. We have now moved on to more of a um, medication regimen in, in terms of treating diabetic eye disease, and this involves in treating, in injecting medicines into the eye uh, that are in a category of medicines that we will call anti-VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor medications. These are highly effective for diabetic macular edema, and there is a good sense that they may be effective for proliferative diabetic retinopathy, but final confirmation of this is still pending. Um, the downside of these injections is that they uh, need to be administered on a monthly basis, so it can be very time consuming in coming into the office and getting these every month. Um, although it sounds like it should be a painful process, it's amazingly not painful, so you should be able to tolerate it, and it's really not much worse than the dilated eye exam. Um, beyond that, if lasers and injections don't take care of your problem, there are surgical alternatives that may be appropriate, and it really is on a patient by patient, situation by situation basis. Thank you again to Dr. Schlossman, to Dr. Murtha, and to our patient presenter, Evelyn, for joining us today. And thank you to our audience for joining us for this very special patient education program focused on diabetic retinopathy. We were so happy to be able to answer so many of your questions throughout the program. And I'd also like to thank Genentech for their support of this very important educational series. Please remember to complete the survey at the end of the program to help us see how much our audience learned from watching this program. And be sure to tune in to part two of this series titled Diabetic Retinopathy, Preserving Your Eyesight on Wednesday, October 14th at DiabetesEyeHealth.com. My name is Casey Kaufman and I'd like to thank you so much for joining us. Good night.